what do we have here? Well, this is something different for me. This is uh, an IBM XT, a 5160 computer that I recently acquired uh, in a really lucky find. Uh, I was vacationing in North Carolina with uh, some family and uh, a lady had a, a huge garage sale, just clearing out an entire garage worth of stuff. And buried in the back was this, among uh, a few other computers. Uh, it was one of those uh, crazy finds that uh, you can sort of only dream about. And uh, got a heck of a deal on it. And I may, you know, I'll show some, some pictures of, of, the, uh, of the computers that I found. But um, not sure if I'll ever talk about them on the channel again. But I did want to talk about this one uh, for December and specifically this thing right here, the IDE to SD adapter, um, which this is something that for whatever reason, I don't see any videos of on YouTube. So I figured I would throw my two cents at it. Um, this is one of those products from Tech Select, which if you you know, you're into vintage DOS era PCs, uh, Tandys, and what have you. Uh, you probably heard of them or maybe even bought some products. And they just make life a lot easier for using systems like this. Um, and something like this, I mean, it's, it's very similar to products that have existed in the past. It just has uh, the SD card twist added to it. That makes it a little easier to use. So in the past, you would have XT to IDE, which was a simple card that had an IDE interface on it. And you had an XT to IDE compact flash adapter, which is probably the most common one. And there's various people that offer that for sale. But this one was appealing to me because uh, for a number of reasons, uh, compact flash cards are getting more and more scarce. They're not really, I mean, I guess they're still in production to some extent. You can still buy some new, but because it's sort of a dying media, uh, you know, they tend to be overpriced for the money. The idea being that they are, of course, IDE compatible. So they work natively with an IDE controller, but what tends to happen, at least from what I hear, is that uh, you try to use them in a system like this with an uh, ID, XT to IDE adapter and they can be picky with those cards. And to me, SD cards just seem a lot more convenient. Uh, I've started using SD uh, to IDE adapters in uh, my Windows 98 systems and uh, just with great results, I'm, you know, I kept having mechanical drives die on me and that was a solution that allows me not only a more reliable storage but uh, something that's easily backed up in case it does die and something that's easy to get data onto. And that same principle applies here where you just have this 3D printed bracket on the rear of your computer and it lets you put in an SD card, take it out, put it in another computer put programs on there, etc. Now this XT computer um, specifically has two 360K drives in it. It's got a 20 meg uh, MFM hard drive. Um, and of course it doesn't work. Um, a lot of the computers that I found in that lot were uh, pretty beat up. Uh, some of them were extremely dirty. This one was actually in better condition compared to the others it needed really fairly minimal cleanup. And on the inside is, it's extremely clean. It's like it was never used. There's hardly any dust or anything uh, in there. And it's a late production, uh, I believe 86 was the date on the inside. And it's fully kitted out. You know, it's got 640K of memory. We're gonna boot it up, of course, do a, a demo here in just a little bit. Uh, don't worry about the keyboard. It's just a really, really cheap thing I found on eBay just to get me going really quick. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over what it's like to use the IDE to SD 
adapter, XT to IDE to ST adapter, and uh, yeah, go from there. All right, so we'll just slide this cover off here. And there it is on the inside. So uh, right now I don't have the MFM hard drive uh, plugged in. In fact, I took out the controller card because that was one quirk with this card. Uh, you're supposed to be able to use these alongside a, a uh, MFM controller card uh, just fine. And it does have uh, switches on here so you can configure, you know, the memory address and whatnot to uh, not conflict. And I tried different settings, but for whatever reason, as long as the hard drive controller card was in there, the XD to IDE card was not being seen. It wasn't being picked up. And I have to say, I'm a complete amateur <laughs> at this era of, of hardware. This is the first system, first early DOS system I've ever owned or really messed with in depth. Besides, you know, when I was a little, little kid and these were still in schools here and there. So, um, you know, I don't really know if there's something I can do to work around that. And I'm not really gonna worry about it because I don't really think this drive is salvageable anyway. And I'm not worried about trying to get it working or anything like that. So we're just going to go ahead and get this screwed in. It does have um, as well a original uh, color graphics card from IBM on there. And of course the nice thing about that is it does have the composite TV output. Because uh, there was no monitor with this system that I could find. So... Uh, we're just using the TV output for now. There's different ways to improve on that. Some people even go so far as to put a VGA card in these computers, which is not error appropriate whatsoever, but it can be done. It is backwards compatible with CGA and EGA and everything else. So uh, that's an option if you want compatibility with more modern screens and displays and or if you don't want to spend the money on uh, getting in an adapter of some kind so we'll just plug that in and get it going Ugh down here all right counted all the memory and that is the XT IDE universal BIOS gives you different options you see on the top to boot from the floppy drive but hard drive or even the basic ROM on the system here uh, but yeah, I mean, beyond this point, <laughs> if you've seen one of these before, none of this stuff will be new. It was all new to me, which was pretty cool, but, uh, you know, just having something where I can easily load up programs like that and uh, have them work. I mean, the, uh, the video output is okay. Um, I mean, sometimes it comes out black and white on the the tv when it should be in color um, but uh you know it's fairly sharp on this uh, toshiba television that i have here for my retro systems and uh will work for now until i come up with a decide on what uh, solution i want to uh, do for that so uh yeah uh really cool uh that it works as easily as it does and of course you do have to turn off the system before you uh, take out the SD card and add or remove files but what I wanted to show is kind of how I got this up and running because it's not really that self-explanatory so to get the XT to IDE SD card adapter working, I found it was really helpful to have one of these. This is an example of just a standard SD to IDE 
um, adapter board. I have a couple of these I use. Um, so this one is set up in a SuperSocket 7 uh, system. It was actually another computer I found in that garage sale. And uh, the advantage of using one of these is that you're not limited to having, uh, you know, extra blank 360K uh, floppies. You know, I resorted to taking out the 360K drives from the XT machine and plugging them into here to write a, a, a boot floppy. And I only had one 360K disc that happened to come with, be stuck in one of the drives of uh, one of the computers I found. So I had one disc and only one working 360K drive uh, because one of the ones, of, one of the two that's in that XT doesn't work and I need to look at that, look into that. But so in the end, what I found was the easiest solution was to boot into uh, MS-DOS, uh, whichever version you're going to use in a more modern machine and just take the SD card that you're going to format, take that one out and put as in this case a two gig uh, card put that in here and because it's basically the same identical adapter just soldered onto that card all the settings for the the heads the cylinders you know everything that uh you know <laughs> virtual heads virtual cylinders it's all going to be the same whatever is set up on this card is going to carry over to the uh, xd to ide adapter so once you get that set up you just move the sd card over to uh, the other system and uh, away you go. So to set it up, of course, there's plenty of how to's, but in the case of when, uh, my, uh, MS DOS, <laughs> MS DOS 3.0, uh, it's pretty much as simple as uh, copying over the system files. You do have to run F disk and set up the partition, uh, primary boot partition and uh, format it and then run up disk again with the MBR um, command and and get it going that way before you copy the files over but I mean it couldn't be more simple um, and again just the convenience I mean these adapters here I, I recommend them for you know uh, up to Windows 98 because uh, they're just really really convenient for getting data off and on and they're plenty fast for uh, that era of machine and uh, so once I did that it was up and running so one quirk I did notice is that when you take the SD card out and put it in a you know just a standard SD card reader in a version of modern Windows uh, I guess the uh, the format is just uh, too old it just doesn't show up at all in Windows 10, but I'm able to uh, pull it up just fine in Windows 98. So using the same USB adapter with a uh, USB uh, thumb drive driver for Windows 98, I can get the files to show up on there and, and easily port uh, data over. It just requires you know, an in-between using Windows 10 to download the software and then my 98 machine to actually write it to the card. But it is possible. I've got a number of programs on here. You can see it started up something there with uh, WordPerfect uh, 5.1. And uh, let's see if I can. And there you go. It's uh, loading WordPerfect. Uh, it's got a weird kind of rainbow shimmer going on on the screen with the composite output. Wissywig, this is not. And you can see it does have the snow effect when you're typing text. So, I'm typing at an awkward angle. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, one of these buttons will get me out of here. Let's see which one. There you go. So admittedly, I'm, you know, not an expert. I don't have anything really groundbreaking to say about uh, the IBM system, uh, PCXT or 
anything else. Uh, as far as what you can do with it, well, there's a couple of things uh, that I found that I've been really enjoying. So, of course, the color graphics is a CGA card that's in there. You know, typically limited to four colors on screen at any moment, but uh, many of you know about the color composite tricks. And if we change the directory, and I have to refresh my memory here, what the command is. All right, so uh, we're in the Commander Keen directory here. And uh, someone on Vogan's uh, a couple of years ago patched Commander Keen to use the color composite tricks. Um, so I'm just going to run it straight away with that mode on if you want to see the game before and after uh, there's plenty of ways to do that there's plenty of footage of the game now this system of course is based on an 8088 it's uh it's gonna be slow you know it's not gonna be real fast and there it is uh looks pretty washed out actually on the screen let's see if i can fix that there we go that's a lot better Yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. I mean, if anything, that's more colors than EGA typically showed. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, and the fact that it can do this, this is running at the same speed that it runs in CGA mode. There's like literally no performance penalty. Uh, I actually played a bit of this game and it is, it's not fast to begin with, but uh, it is playable. And uh, just the way that looks is just it's actually really impressive. Um, so <laughs> I was having fun with with this for a while. And of course, you got like the the uh, the demo scene stuff out, you know, with uh, um, area fifty one fifty and eighty eighty eight miles per hour and stuff like that. Those are really fun to to run. But it's just been a little. Uh, fragment video just kind of showing what I've been doing DOS related lately haven't really done anything um, you know uh, related to DOS Ember ever because it just isn't typically my era uh, for for anything but uh, you know it's there's a reason to do it now at least uh, in part so I uh, hope you got some enjoyment out of this and uh we'll see you again in the future take care